So today, 115.1 came out. Yesterday, we upgraded to 115. Today, we are patching to 115.1. So we're also going to go over how I how I patched one of the breaking changes. Uh, let's just let's just patch this real quick. So let's go. All right. So we're going to go over to the Home Assistant website. So we have one one five point one. So there's not too many things that I'm concerned about. I know the template sensors. They changed. They really changed how they're doing template evaluations. So that's one of the things that broke. That's one of the things that I fixed yesterday. So I'm just gonna run through what I fixed and how I fixed that. Let's do a quick, let's do a quick upgrade. So I do have Docker. So we're gonna swing this over here. And we're gonna do, so we're gonna do, if we look, I have a script called HA update. So what the script does is it will pull down the new Docker files, the new Docker images, it will turn off the old images, then it will turn them on using the new images, and then it will just delete some of the old ones, and then it connects to the Hass server. So, pretty straightforward. Let's just run that. HA update. This is all going against my Docker Compose file. So it will pull the latest or whatever, whatever entries I have in my Docker Compose, I do have the, the latest Home Assistant. Here's the new Home Assistant coming down. This is the patched version. So while this is coming down, the old home assistant is still, my old home assistant is still running. So if we go here, everything's working. Uh, we're at version, oh, and there it goes. So if we just came down, so yeah. So it pulled down all the latest versions. It then stopped all of the containers and now it's gonna restart them all using the new version. So the thing I love about Docker is it just allows me to upgrade and downgrade very, very easily. So as easy as we're pulling down new images, we can pull down older versions. All I need to do is change that Docker Compose. So if I show you the Docker Compose, let's go here. Let's go to Home Assistant root. Bring that over here. Uh, under Docker files, I have this Docker Compose. And then in the Docker Compose, you can basically just say, bring down the latest. In my case, we're gonna bring down for Home Assistant right here. So we can either do a specific version, we can do the latest, or we can do uh, the release code, which is the beta code. We shoot back here, scroll up a little. It powered, it powered up our latest Home Assistant, which is our new patched version, and now it's connected to the log so I can see sort of the boot log, make sure there's no errors. And if we jump back to Home Assistant, we should be able to go to config, uh, info, and we can see that we're running 115.1. So this is the new patch. This is gonna continue coming up. This is a standard Home Assistant stuff, right? So that UI pops up super fast and then it does take a little while for the rest of the, rest of the components to start. Since this is kind of a new version, um, it does, it does occasionally have to pull down some additional dependencies. So the first version. Home Assistant has been restarted. Okay, there we go. So Home Assistant has been restarted. So what that is, is that that's a little, um, that's a little automation that will leverage the Amazon Echoes to do, actually it leverages the Amazon Media Player component to, to just do a notification. So when the when Home Assistant restarts, it just notifies me. It just does that that little speech text to let me know that it's fully up. So if I'm not watching the log, I can hear it and I know everything's up. So I do like that. It also lets me know that the hacks component is working and everything's everything is good. So now that this is running, I wanted to show you one. So if we go over to my repo, I created an image. Uh, I created an image. I created an issue yesterday. So this one is completed, but I had this breaking change. So they did a change to the entity IDs. If you, in Facebook, I've seen some posts about it that people were having problems with it. I really didn't have any problems with it. When I did the upgrade to 115, what basically happened was I got some warnings and some alerts. So I got this warning that was, that the entity ID option was deprecated. 
So I just had to go through my files. It was pretty easy to find. If you look at the change, by the way, it didn't stop Home Assistant from running for me. It just gave me these warnings that it was deprecated and that I should clean up my code. So what I did was I just went in here. The biggest thing was just like the, for the Amazon devices, I have this last, uh, I won't say the word, but I have this, this one variable right here that, uh, that lets me know which, uh, which Echo device was the, was the last one to be interacted with. So this is great for if you want to like push alerts and things like that, you know kind of where people are because they've interacted with that, with that Echo device. So all I had to do was I just had to go in there and I just, for any template sensor, I just had to go in there and pull out the entity ID. So I pulled that out for this sensor. You can see, I just, I had a bunch of, uh, I have a bunch of like just sensors that give me the number of different things and they had these blank entity IDs. So I just pulled them out and it was fine. So you can see pulled out, pulled out, pulled out, pulled out, just basically all around. Uh, it was a real straightforward search and replace. I was just able to get them all out and everything came right back up. So the YAML code was validated. It, it came up no problems. Uh, and that was it. So then I closed this off. So if you're, if you do have some of these, code packages, like sort of, you know, something that gives you the number of sensors or scripts and automations, then you probably have the same problem. So you'll see those errors in the log when it first comes up and then you can just pull them out. So super easy to fix, no issues. The patch worked, we're now running 115.1. I didn't have any problems with that. I love using Docker. Just a quick video. I hope everyone's having a good weekend and I'll see you in the next one, bye.